All right, KISS Army, welcome to the KISS FAQ Podcast. Thank you for giving us your time today. Nothing is into your head. I hope we don't do any damage. We hope that you enjoy. Enjoy. enjoy, enjoy. Welcome to episode 374 of the KISS FAQ Podcast. I'm your host, sadly back from Hawaii because I would rather be on a beach letting these guys run the show. So much more fun to delegate. I just post it. <laughs> Joined by Marcus Almighty, Mark. Greetings. 69 Blizzard, voice of reason, who I think will become a little bit unreasonable Hello. today. So stay Possibly. tuned in. And someone who's never reasonable, Lonnie. That's up? Those kiss. He's had a good week, Lonnie. How, mm-hmm. how did your football teams do at the weekend? My, 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 the Cincinnati Bearcats won, but the, uh, the uh, Bengals... Or they went down to the Bears. It was not pretty. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, oh. There's hope. There's hope. I, I get down on Sundays and Mondays, and then by Tuesday and Wednesday, the hope starts going up. And it's the only thing in life I'm optimistic about is that freaking. Day. I'm not a huge. <laughs> I am a huge Bears fan, but I'm not a big follower of it. So don't take that too seriously, there, Lonnie. I don't take anything too seriously. All right. <laughs> I'm a TB12 fan, so you can all hate me, but I did watch a Cowboys yeah. game, and they actually won. So. Congratulations, Cowboys. You found the white stuff in the end zone and didn't call the DEA. All right, so let's move on <laughs> into uh, some topics. Um, anyone got any new purchases or uh, stuff? Ken, I think you do. Well, the only new thing is uh, I talked about it uh, I think last week. Big game, or yeah, it to be here last week, and uh, it already arrived um, yesterday. Um, really good. I started to uh, read through it. Um, yeah, really awesome book. Um, look forward to getting through the rest of it, but uh, really well done. Very well done. I will so, say this. The show that you, uh, you, Lonnie, and Andrew did about that book in particular, I watched that on the flight back. I enjoyed the show, guys. You know, So hats off to you uh, for putting on a good show. I'm totally unneeded here. You guys, you guys can no. all fly That's without sad. me. Nope, I'm happy to re- I'm <laughs> happy to retire and just pr- become not, a producer like that Jeopardy. Twi- oh wait, no, he also left the show. After. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Um, but it was really entertaining, and I immediately sent payment to the guys at the Kiss Army Spain for that magazine, which I'd forgotten to purchase. And then I forgot that I only sent them the postage. I got a little email saying, you know you only sent the postage, right? You need to actually buy the book as well. That happened to me, too. I did the same thing. I did the same thing. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, they're really cool. So it, gotta read it all. Yeah, one, yeah. Once I got that sorted out, um, it should be on the way. So I'm looking forward to receiving it because it did look very interesting and yet another good, um, you know, fan club club <clears throat> publication <clears throat> on top of Alan's coming out as well. Mark, um, I have something to show too. If if, if there's time, is it legal? <laughs> yeah, it's legal. <laughs> We have. We always have time. Like to take something this could be uh, <laughs> mature audiences only. So, Dark Monarchy. Okay. Yes. The, the All CD roads is lead here. to Rome. It is here. It has arrived. I made a video of it earlier, but just in case for the people who watch the podcast who may not have seen my videos, uh, it's here. And for people who have ordered it, I have already packed up stuff, and it'll be going in the mail tomorrow. So, uh, expect it soon. And for Very all you nice. people who ordered the. Uh, the ordinary day lace cut thing that is in the mail as well. Julian, yours is in the mail. Oh, as well. I did order that. Okay, good. Yeah. So it's it is en route to you. All right. So that's all I had to. Yeah, that's cool. And the Dark Monarchy CD is really good. And I right before I left, I think I got the uh, the Joe Bailey CD as yeah. well, which is also very, very good. So check out Mark's Bandcamp, um, either Project Gemini, Dark Monarchy, uh, mm-hmm. Lower Third Collective. I mean, you're, you're, you're a one-man multiple band. So, <laughs> yeah. so there we go. Um, other announcements? Well, I, I did post a well i did make a post on the faq saying that i thought i was done doing kiss books but that may not be entirely accurate one of my pet peeves is that no one has ever stepped up and done a book dedicated to the 1980 unmasked tour now as an international fan someone who hails from england originally long ago um 
it's the one international tour that really ignored America. They did the one Palladium show to W. Eric Carr. And I've got a thousand pages of memos, contracts, uh, internal shit from our coin that I got and I didn't share. So it really does form a very good basis for going through the whole year in terms of the contracts with Phonogram, with the recording of the album, Peter Chris leaving the band. And we've also had obviously a lot of information about the auditions for Eric Carr. And then the tour itself and a, a lot of the things that went down on there. So right now it's an idea. I do need to have assistance from fans in all of those countries to see if it's even feasible to do because rely solely on memos and internal paper goods would be really really boring unless there's contributions of like ticket stubs flyers posters some of the the, the promo stuff that was done in these various markets at the time um, and you know what I've pushed the bounds of word as far as it can go so I need help with InDesign I've tried to learn it I'm incapable of learning it because I just have way too much other work to do. So I, I would need a team around me to do what is a fan publication. So if you think this is some massive business that's going to pay you an hourly salary, no, I want you to bring your passion and the fact that you may have been burned by others into getting something out similar to what Ken just showed and what the guys did a episode on last week. So if you're interested in celebrating Unmasked from the international perspective, um, there's a lot of scope to see if it's feasible. I'm going to keep working at it and see what I come up with on my own. But um, again, I don't see it actually making it into reality unless there is buy-in from other people with a similar vision that want to, to go back to the fan view. I, I hope you do because I really enjoy your books, especially I'm still still reading this one all the time. I mean, I still flip through this book. I still flip through the solo one all the time. So... <clears throat> We better so get on the book. show every week. You can stop kissing his ass. Yeah, I, I'm still finding goddamn <laughs> typos in it. So there, there you go. Time stories. Yeah, I, I, I've, I've learned a lot since then. Someone, someone posted the other day on on the board about the original Kiss Album focuses, and I looked back at those. I was thinking of doing an updated. <clears throat> And when I started, my writing has moved on a long way from there, I'd like to think, as has the copy editing and the corrections and all that. So those are like my red-haired stepchildren that I just don't acknowledge anymore because that's a different Julian Gill. That's the J-U-L-I-A-N. I am J-U-L-I-E-N now. <laughs> He's evolved. Yeah. You know, th those are great for publication on, on a, a fan website like Kiss Asylum where they originated, but as a commercial product uh -uh. no um so let's get into today's topic and kiss is finally it's the big news that everyone's actually been waiting for everything that's happened this year yeah. has been is that the big news is that the big news is that and the answer has been no 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 but um destroyer 45th anniversary deluxe edition is the big news that everyone's mm. been waiting for it has finally become official and if anyone has checked out the ad the sonic glory mm -hmm. of hearing some of those demos that, that they have teased with and the packages so uh, let's start off with a round table of your impressions what are the stuff what is the stuff mm -hmm. that's been listed uh, for inclusion on that that grabs you what are the glaring gaps that you think um, have been mm -hmm. omitted? And keep in mind that we're not privy to any of the discussions uh, that go into making one of these packages. So there are always legal licensing <clears throat> and a plethora of other music business shit that get in the way of fans' dreams. Lonnie, let's start with you. You were going to be first. Um, <laughs> I was excited. I mean, it's we, we've we've done this show for years now and we've talked about something like exactly like this for years now that why don't you do these box sets like metallica does or like Def leopard does why don't and, and a lot of other bands just the first two bands that come to my head um because metallica's black one just came out and it's amazing but I was like, why don't you do this i mean i mean it's it's a way instead of doing a box set volume two it's a way to do box set after box set after box set and just keep that reoccurring revenue just coming in. I mean, you could do these for all of them. So 
the first thing I thought when I saw it is, well, of course, Destroyer is the first one you're going to do something like this for. It's the first it's the first album that they did colored vinyl for. It's the album that they used to test the waters with. Well, if no one's going to buy a Destroyer Super Deluxe Edition, well, then we're not going to put out a Hotter Than Hell Super Deluxe Edition. So it makes total sense that they're starting with Destroyer. I know Mark's attitude about Destroyer, but I don't give a shit. It's... <laughs> They're one of their best albums. I'm sorry. It's probably my second favorite album. So I I, I thought I thought it was great. Um I, I'm sure we'll get through it that oh, there's some omissions in it that like, well, why isn't this on there? Why isn't that on there? Why isn't there a a um you know a real Blu-ray of you know of of some some footage like like where you know, why isn't Anaheim on there or something like that? I'm sure there's some red tape of why Anaheim isn't on there. Anaheim wasn't on Kissology either, so there's got to be a reason why Anaheim isn't showing up. There's got to be some red tape in that, and whoever they had to pay for it is just, re- I'm, I guess it's ridiculous. But the the Paris thing I thought was really fantastic. Mm-hmm. That really unsung European tour, the first time they're playing these songs, like wow, that's it's almost like it's you know, and there's almost like an extension of the Alive tour with Destroyer songs mixed in. Like that's gonna be. I'm I'm really excited for that. I mean, it's the band on fire. I mean, everybody talks about how great Alive was at the band on fire, and it's just an extension of the Alive tour. Excuse me, but a lot of these, a lot of the stuff on discs two and three, yeah, it's stuff we've heard of before. It's stuff that's on the box set. It's stuff that's on a lot of those Destroyer. Um, I have a, like you know, I'm sure most people have that are on the show or listen to the show have like a Destroyer bootleg that has a lot of those instrumentals and you know the other versions mm-hmm. of of um, great great expectations and things like that. But the sound quality that we're going to get off these is going to be unprecedented compared to what we've had and what has been circulating for years and years and years. So I'm exci- I'm, I, I'm, I'm not going to get hung up on what could have been on there that's not on there. I'm excited that they're actually doing something like this. And it looks fantastic with the Kiss Army kits and everything else. It, it totally lives up to my expectations at the end of the day. And I, I, I mean, I, I, I ordered it that morning. I, I was so excited. I had, I had ordered the super deluxe version of it that morning. You know, this is what I've been wanting. Put my money where my mouth is because I want more of these. All right, Lonnie, think of your, your Lonnie's reason to buy it. One reason, one selling point, and we'll come back to you uh, after I've uh, asked sure. the other guys the same thing. M- Mark, your initial impressions. I also want you to, to address something that you probably can speak to best out of all of us, and that is Stephen Wilson, uh, who's mm-hmm. been brought in to do the uh, Dolby Atmos and Five Once Around mix for the studio album. So, you know, to me, this is correcting what Resurrected wasn't. You know, Resurrected was tinkering with history, revisionism to a certain extent. And it was interesting for what it was. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad Bob revisited it, uh, but it hasn't had many listens in my my life. If I listen to Destroyer, I go to the original. So, so Mark, go. Mm. <clears throat> okay, well, I'm sure that people right now are going to say, okay, here we go. Here comes the big... Uh, complaining segment of the show but I'll, I'll i'll tell you this when i first heard that there was a box set coming out i i was i was excited and i was kind of saying you know out loud like finally it's only been like five six years since we've been all harping about kiss doing something like this and finally they do it and decide to do it i mean who knows what they had to do to do it but i'm just glad that they did it am i glad that they did destroyer no because I don't like Destroyer. But here's the thing, Lonnie made an excellent point. All the KISS fans out there seem to think that this is the best album that they did. So we're gonna see now if they're gonna put their money where their mouth is and actually buy it. Because if you don't buy it, guess what people, this is the first and last box that you're gonna see from KISS. So if you don't buy this thing, you ain't, there ain't gonna be no Love Gun box, there ain't gonna be no Creatures box, there ain't gonna be nothing else. Because because Universal Music is about money first. They don't care about your collections, they don't give a crap about what you want, they care about your money. So if you ain't gonna buy it, there ain't no other box. I immediately bought it, and I'll tell you something. I bought the deluxe box. I, I, at first I was gonna buy the, I was gonna buy the, yeah, I was gonna buy the vinyl only, but I mm-hmm. stepped up and I bought the, 
the box. Why did I buy the box? I could care less about the the album. I couldn't really care about you know some of the you know the the, the instrumentals and all those things. I mean, I've heard those things you know quite a bit. What what got me was Numero Uno, the Blu-ray, because as you mentioned, Stephen Wilson, who is a absolute genius and master when it comes to surround atmos mixing, and you will hear it yourself when you hear how he's going to do it. Because I guarantee you, it is the reason to buy this box set because he knows how to do this. Everybody is going to him. Every band and their brother wants him to do their Atmos mixes for their Blu-rays because he is that good on it. That was number one. And number two, why I decided to get it was because of the ephemera, the extras that came in this. Like there are things in here that they're offering when I'm looking through the list now, like, you know, Four brand new 8x10 band member pictures, 8x12 destroyer foil flyer, the Canadian uh, destroyer flyer, like all these things. There's a lot of things in there that collectors are hunting that are a lot of money. I know I realize these are like reissues and not the originals, obviously, but you know what? I'm trying to find some of these press kit things that they're offering that are in here, like the newsletters and stuff like that. They're going for a lot of money in the collector market. There's no hope in hell for someone like me to get originals like this. So when I saw that they were offering this stuff in there, I didn't even put another thought into it. I just went into my PayPal account, bam, dropped the $200 plus to get this. And I, I didn't shed a single extra minute thinking about it. And the, to some of you guys, that might seem odd because it is Destroyer. But you know what? I, I want to see other boxes. I want to see a Love Gun one. I'd like to see, you know, a, who knows, a Dress to Kill one, whatever, like an, any other album, an unmasked box. But it's not going to happen if we don't support it. <clears throat> You know, and what's worrying me a little bit about it is that when I, when they announced it, you had those usual jokers who came out and said, "Oh, another cash grab! Oh, I'm not getting, they're not getting my money." And I'm thinking to myself, "Okay, well, you know what? Don't come back, you know, seven months from now, say I don't understand why they're not doing a creatures box set. Well, if you don't gonna buy this one, there ain't gonna be no creatures box. So use your brain and buy it. You know, I, I don't get it. Don't tell me what to do." <laughs> I, I, I don't get to these people who are, are making these comments and then expect something to happen later on that they want. It ain't going to happen unless you get this. That's really my big point on this. And th th that's the two reasons why I want to get this. Believe me, his surround mixing, Stephen Wilson, is fantastic. I, I would not say it. I wouldn't put my reputation on the line saying that if I didn't 100% believe it, that his Atmos mixing is really good. I had a friend who has a couple of his things that he's done, and he has one of those big, heavy-duty, like you know, movie theater sound systems in his house, and he played it for me, and it's 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 unbelievable what you can do with those kind of mixes. So I can only imagine what they're going to do with songs like, you know, Detroit Rock City, where they have all those kind of different sound effect stuff and things like that. Imagine what you can do in that sort of a surround capacity. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah, I'm just wondering how the fuck I'm even going to play those mixes. I don't have the gear. I'm, I still can't even play quadraphonic <laughs> yeah. mixes properly, you know, for that matter. But uh, I'm sure it'll all be very, very nice. I think one of the things that you mentioned, Mark, that is a, a really good point is that, you know, stuff like the Canadian Flyer, that's mega rare shit. So that's really good choice of stuff to include in there. One of the things that jumped out at me was the vellum uh stage blueprints being reproduced mm. i think that's a really nice touch i mean i'm not going to hang it on the wall or anything but i think it's really interesting when those came <clears> up <throat> for auction at uh, i think it was backstage auctions uh um, mm -hmm. they came from mark Ravitt's collection they are really cool and for you to actually get to see you know the god of thunder machine and where it was supposed to be placed and the cats and you know all the positioning of all the different elements that's the one thing really lacking from the look at the destroyer tour you know the stoned in paris bootleg i'm you know i'm on the fence about it. i think it's cool but i think when you think about it from the perspective that it's the stoned in paris bootleg um being released in an official package that's very cool that was one of the core you know kind of legendary bootlegs so very very neat from that perspective the i have one point on this that really bothers me to the point of not sleeping Seriously. And it's that the bonus track Sweet Pain with Ace's original solo is relegated to that blue uh Blu-ray DVD and is not included in the regular bonus tracks where I feel it should be. And that's my that's my only critique really for this. 
I, I, I take it as a we're, we're paying admission in hopes that they do other titles and who knows what the deal is behind the scenes. Um, again, go listen to that ad. Listen to the audio fidelity of nothing to lose uh, or pardon me, none of your business. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's that good. Yeah. to me. I've said it before, is what it's all about. Just my personal taste as a collector. These bootlegs that I've had for many years, like I told Gene at the vault, so thank you, Gene, for giving me the opportunity to finally pay you for all the shit I've been listening to for decades. Um, <laughs> you know, in the very best quality possible, that really is what it's about. It's not the fire. That That is key. You know, howling for your love, it's like, what the hell is that doing there? But you know what? They get to decide when their songs are from when, and we don't know it all. We don't have access to all that. Ken, um, all of that, all of that question to you as well. Yeah, well, yeah, I was like, you know, like Lonnie, uh, I saw the, I think, an email at the first thing in the morning. I was like, I quick, you know, I, you know ran over to my computer and got on. <laughs> You know, and, and did the order. I did the order for the box, and I did, I did the vinyl too. Um, so, oh, hashtag yeah. blessed. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I was obviously excited about it. But yeah, some of the things that I mean, I, I'm with Julian though, where I, I have my TV, but I don't have a, a theater, you know, surround sound um, deal. I mean, I can play my Blu-ray through, you know, the playstation or there's whatever. other mixes though there's other ones besides the atmos though so. yeah 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 so you know i i guess i could uh get that converted to uh something else so i could play it on my computer or whatever you know um to get that to uh play it there instead but uh otherwise yeah i mean the unreleased songs and obviously a lot of them are, have been released in other forms and probably yeah, not not good sounding really um, copies of it that are out there. Um, but yeah, the, the book, I've always said when we talked about box sets, I've said book. I always say book. <laughs> you need a book. And I'm hoping that book is, has some a lot of cool stuff in it, like cool pictures, unseen stuff, and stuff about, you know, in the studio and maybe stuff like that would be very, very cool. Um, so that that's exciting. Yeah, the redoing the army newsletter and the uh and the oh the the tour book the kiss on tour mm -hmm. right yeah i thought oh, well, i don't have that tour book so that's a good way i guess to get it um mm -hmm. so stuff yeah. like that um the and yeah there's the other stuff that they give you the army you know the bumper sticker and uh flyers and there's a poster and, and so on. yeah it's all cool it's all part of you know kind of doing a box um but uh, and then I guess the other thing I thought I was uh, I'm interested is the that Gotham Rock City News Volume One newspaper, uh, the yeah. track by track interview, um, mm -hmm. which which I think is that kind of stuff you know interests me. But uh, when I'm looking at that previously unreleased disc too, um, previously unreleased is with the you know the asterisk, and I'm like really uh, they haven't been released. I mean some of those like Burning Up with Fever. It says previously unreleased. I thought, well, it's a different version, maybe possibly than the the one that was released uh, on you know the on Gene Simmons Vault. You know, it it's probably another version. Yeah, it's probably the um, Kiss version from early '75. You know, which yeah, they, it, they recorded it, in yeah, Los Angeles. That, Right. So, or it could be an, uh, yet another version from Magna Graphic. Or, you know, Gene cut that Seems, lot. He was cutting it every other week at one point. He had a lot of <laughs> versions of a lot of his songs. So when it has the asterisk, oh, shoot, well, it's never been there. So, I, well, okay, I'm looking forward to seeing or hearing that. Um, and then regarding uh, the, um, the bootleg, Olympia. Now, I'm surprised, and, and maybe it's the quality is you know they, they didn't save that for a uh, off the soundboard uh mm. type release but you know what i have here this is this is something what well, i don't collect bootlegs but this is one of the bootlegs that uh i that is just you know it's one of the best looking bootlegs th this is the uh this was the first pressing of this bootleg i guess from what i understand um but yeah it's uh just your standard, you know, bootleg, but it has ten songs, I think. It's on missing. Here. Let me go, rock and roll on the encores, I believe. Yeah, ten um, or possibly ten, Cold Gin like as well. There's twelve on the uh, on the list. 
Yeah. Or Kiss Alive. But yeah, yeah they, I mean, it's, it's this Roxy. Roxy Records. Roxy Records deal. Um, but yeah, I've always I've always had this. This is like one I just never, never Can got you show the track of. list again? Can you show the back again, Ken? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Hopefully it's not. Can you see it? Is that too high? So it looks, go back a bit. Go back a bit. Yeah, because it looks like they ended at 100,000 years drum solo. And then, so that would be like, you have Black Diamond, Detroit Rock City, and Rock and Roll Night after that. So are, is that yeah. what's missing after me? I maybe think so. Rock and Roll Night, maybe? Uh, Detroit, yeah. Well, Detroit City is there. And that's... Yeah. And I'm wondering if it's on the vinyl <laughs> by itself. But uh, because I, I don't remember. I haven't listened to it in so long. Yeah. Um, so I'd be interested to compare the quality of, of that versus this one. So that was kind of interesting to me. Uh, something that I had. And right now, there's a little bit of debate over that. You know, people are unsure whether it's a soundboard or whether it's a really good audience recording, or or what it is precisely. So, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to it just because again, you held up one of the early copies of that, and it, again, it was like Long Beach, like Winterland. It's one of those ones that date really far back for collectors who, you know, if you've been a fan since the '80s and collecting bootlegs, maybe even earlier. Um, yeah. I can't speak to that. You know, th those were some of those shows that circulated so marrying it with the package is really cool i want to talk about one one point or a couple of points actually from the board number one is the kiss faq message board was initially overwhelmingly positive in the reaction to that i i was mm -hmm. you know very impressed and shocked that sometimes we're a, a little bit jaded and sour and the vast majority of people other than the usual trolls were you know this is cool this is excellent this is good and that was very refreshing from that perspective to see fan reaction to you know the big announcement be be excellent the other point is if you go back to april the 1st 2006 when the april fools joke <laughs> dropped that oh, was yeah. A, yeah that was a two cd that. 30th anniversary edition you know and most of the things that were listed on that second CD that everyone got excited are actually on this freaking deluxe set now, <laughs> and it's got a third disc. Now, to be fair as well, a lot of what's on that third disc is throwaway because I really don't believe in using mono mixes as a filler unless there's a specific difference in that mix rather than an edit that has been just pieces chopped or a chorus... Um, you know, repeated, a fade out started earlier, a fade in, you know, started early. Yeah, yeah. And for the most point, uh, most part in the 1970s, getting to the three minute mark or thereabouts for radio was critical. So there was an axe that fell on all of these single versions, which is nothing more than an axe falling on it. It's a little bit different than, say, Hard Times, which had you have that little bit of extra at the end or Strutter 78, which is a completely different mix mm -hmm. and shit like that. So. You know, there's good and positives in it, but I think, were you surprised, Lonnie, by the FAQ or Facebook reaction? I, I was. It was. It was. You're right. It was genuinely positive, and I was. It was pleased to see that as as aside to the normal bitching and moaning that we usually get on the FAQ and on mm -hmm. Facebook. So, um, I think fans had the same reaction that the four of us did. Like, yes, finally. We're, we're doing what the band is doing, what we have basically wanted or demanded for years. Um, so the fact that it was genuinely positive was was refreshing to me. You know, it was, it's see, well, see, give the actually give be you, you claim to be like we're all about the fans, we'll, we'll be about the fans, and the fans are, are going to be appreciated. Yeah. All right, uh, uh, let's go. I just, Sorry, I just, I just want to say, <clears throat> yeah, Lonnie had mentioned the the before, um, or maybe it was Mark about yeah buying. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to buy this in order to maybe both of you said it to to you know keep these things going. Well, the thing that bothers me about this, I was thinking about it the other day. This you can only buy it on Kiss Online. Where is it currently? This is. Yeah, currently, but what? Why are they waiting? Damn. It's all over the internet saying here. You know, I, I don't understand why 
you'd have to sell it on Kiss Online first versus Amazon or any other outlook, you know, outlet or or, or online shopping, you know, record store, or whatever. Um, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, it was published in all these different, you know, classic rock and louder <clears throat> and all these mm -hmm. different news, <clears throat> rock and roll news uh, format, you know, websites out there. Why didn't they put it on out on Amazon or something else? It, it just doesn't make any sense. I, I kind of I, understand the, <laughs> the vinyl to a degree, you know, um, that part of it, but the actual box set, like Metallica, it's on Amazon. It's everywhere. You can get it anywhere. But I think I think they're do I think they're maybe being cautious because if you remember when they did the Killers, the Pink Remember the Pink version of the Kiss Killers that came out, the German one there, they had that on Amazon, I believe, and stuff like that. And there was a huge, huge brouhaha about how people didn't get their orders. They got the orders canceled from Amazon and all this other stuff. So I'm, I may be thinking that they're saying, we don't want to get into another fiasco like that. Let's just keep it internalized to Kiss Online for now. And then once, you know, the bulk of it gets bought, then then maybe they'd be willing to, like, open the doors a bit more. With it because there was, there was a lot of people who bitched and said, I were not ordering again because of what happened with Amazon. You yeah. know? And, and think of it this way as well. Yeah. Uh, as someone who sells books on Amazon, Amazon takes a hell of a lot of cut from your sales. So if you can do it all yourself, which I much prefer to do direct sales, apart mm -hmm. from the hassle that comes with that. So it's a two-sided mm -hmm. coin, literally, with Amazon, that there is a it, there is value in paying that, but <laughs> there's also pain in paying that. So w what is your better uh, arrangement for the numbers that you're talking? I figure it's all down to numbers, and their numbers are such that it's, let's see how many direct sales we can get. Is that more economic? Does that put more money back in the pockets of those who want that money <clears throat> rather than giving that to Bezos to send his space dildo up, you know? So Kiss Online has never screwed up or anything on their <laughs> online of they have. I yeah. know they have. They've, they've screwed me, you know, me too. So... Uh, they better I, I package kinda, it properly. I'll say that right now. They if they're selling it, right. it directly, oh, they had better it. be the, just like Universal. Yeah. All the box sets I got, uh, the last two I bought were the Def Leppard, um, you know, six or eight LP boxes that came beautifully packaged in a custom box with a built-in one-inch uh, air gap with double, you know, double wall. Mm -hmm. It was like the Titanic, <laughs> which is probably a really bad example it's to bad use, analogy. but <laughs> but it was it was it was double hulled and. Uh, you know, really solid cardboard, and it was pristine. So I was able to actually reuse those when I sold those on because I never got around to opening them. So I'm just hoping that they package it properly, um, in turn, including the internals, so that they're not shaking around and you know ripping uh, uh, apart. So you know, convenience-wise, I think everyone wants use, that prime can, shipping. But you know what? They can matter. use those one of those uh, colored new jackets that are uh, so ugly <laughs> they can wrap the wrap the box set in that to protect it man you know bad. i saw your post but there's one thing I'm, there's, there's one thing i'm kind of worried about though and I, i'm wondering if maybe julian might be able to speak to this because i don't know if you have any more insight into this stuff but um the whole vinyl thing okay we all know from hearing other people talking and i know from my experience of doing my own vinyl and stuff there's a long wait a long, long wait now for vinyl. I'm hoping that KISS went ahead and started doing the pressings of these vinyls long before they announced this thing. I'm hoping that they at least started because if they're only going to press it on the amount that they're getting ordered now, I got news for you people who ordered that vinyl. You're waiting till 2022 for that vinyl because that, there's like a nine, yeah, there's like a, there's like a nine to 10 month wait on vinyl right now being pressed. Like if you order, put it in an order now, you're waiting nine, ten months. So that's why I didn't bother ordering the vinyl because because if they do what they normally do and say, okay, well, we're going to ship your order together, the box and the vinyl together. Well, if they're going to wait for the vinyl to be done, you're going to be waiting for that box till God knows when. So hopefully they're not going to do that and just send the box and send your vinyl later because I unless they've pressed it ahead of time, which I'm hoping maybe they had foresight to do that, uh, well, knowing Kiss they didn't, uh, then you're going to be waiting for 
You're going to be waiting for that vinyl. You can, well, you I, can I doubt it, but, you know, Mark, I yeah. want to be completely fair to you. And uh, don't take any offense of this, but Recifle mm -hmm. Records is not universal. So yeah. I think I think the big labels, and again, I have zero inside knowledge. I'm not part of anything. I, I'm just, you know, talking out of my ass, basically. Um, <laughs> the big labels, I would think, have more clouds Cloud? with pressing plants to say, hey, you want all our business, you know, uh, bump us up the queue. You know, we, we've got some projects coming that we're going to need shorter timelines on. Uh, which Reciful Records release can you kick down the waiting <laughs> list? And, you know, and if yeah. there's you, there's also a hundred of you doing similar small batch pressings that, as you know, probably from dealing with train records, uh, get delayed. Yeah, you know, but I'm, I'm just saying it only or, because I... Because I also know that it, is, it has happened with bigger bands too. Because I I know for a fact that when I talked to William, who runs Train, he said that they've gotten contacted by Universal and by other labels to take some of their orders because they're waiting from their people and they're not getting their stuff done. So they're going to Train and getting presses done. They've done like front, like back even back in the day, Rush Feedback when it came out on vinyl. Train had to press like a thousand copies for them because they weren't getting their stuff from their ones that they were getting from the regular pressing plants. So I, I don't know. I, I agree with you 100%. My little rinky dink label is not going to get pushed for their my vinyl as Universal Music will or Sony will or something like that. But I'm just saying from what I've heard, even they have to wait too because yeah, and, for every and, Universal, and I'm sure you can put your I'm, other labels. Yeah, I'm sure know? they can put their orders in. You know, so let, let's take Aerosmith. They're, they're doing the uh, the new Record Store Day release of a 1970. Yeah. So <laughs> if if you place an order, what is your latest time for actually delivering uh, your your lacquers, your pre all, all the shit that ta it takes to you know make that record? You could probably make place your order and get in the queue. Mm -hmm. So you're holding your place and deliver at a very, you know, late, late time frame. So is there a reservation system for that, that, you know, your little uh, blinky thing goes off that your table's ready um, and you've got a certain time frame to deliver stuff. So I'm sure that record labels have flexibility, especially on these large projects, that they have a ballpark time frame that they know that they're going to want to release it, but they can't be specific. Whereas maybe a smaller label, has a much shorter time frame from completion to wanting it because they don't have the budget to offset and put that in and say, hey, you know, here's your money right now. Um, we need it pressed around here. So hold as a spot in the queue. So mm -hmm. that, that's my guess. But again, I don't have any idea. So maybe, you know, Kiss My Collectibles, which has much better insight into that side of the business than I do, could actually speak to that. That'd be really fascinating to know how that's working with very limited pressing capacity these days and also natural resource issues such as the pellets required for pressing the freaking vinyl in the first place. Yeah, because I know that uh, Jason Herndon was saying on his site that there was a there's a wait for their vinyl too. They were apologizing already that they've had to wait with the vinyl because they're the the pressing plant is delayed. In yeah, but are, are they them. are they really any different than you though? They're a little well, independent. Uh, um, yeah. Deal with a limited number I, of, of would, uh, well, pressings, yeah, I mean, but, which I did buy. The, that slower, but, but, fear but that, no evil. But that's the thing, though. I, Jason Herndon actually works for one United Records. Like the United Record pressing is attached to where he works. So you would think, you know, no offense, Jason, if you're listening to this, but United is the worst pressing plant ever. <laughs> but if the thing is, if, if, if he has an inroad into them, you know, then maybe he could have maybe, you know, hey, can you press my stuff? But I don't think he did. I think he went to another pressing place, right? Uh, but, you know, even with that, I mean, maybe he couldn't get in through United, a place that he's worked for for years. I mean, it's you would be surprised, guys, how loaded these pl these plants are for business like business has never been better for these companies now all right before lonnie starts banging his head against the desk <laughs> sorry lonnie i'm gonna it's all good i'm gonna reel us back in on topic who's calling um I, i'm doing a show right now i'll get back to you later um so we're let's talk about what is the one thing if you've got someone on the fence 
and you're going to say you need to buy this box set other than you need to buy it in case we have a chance of getting any more because I'm pretty sure that's not going to wash. What is the one thing in this box that you would say um, to persuade someone on the fence to jump off the fence into traffic and drop the coin? Lonnie, I gave you the longest to think about it. For me, it's disc four, the, the live the live disc of them in Paris. Um, that's what I'm looking forward to the most, is Flaming Youth Live in May of 1976, mixed in with basically the live set list. You know, um, in, in Detroit Rock City and Shout Out Out Loud, and just hearing that set list from that show in pristine quality, you know, it's it, it may be the closest thing we get to like hearing like a, a raw version of a live without all the edits that we've been clamoring for for years to. And who knows, maybe we'll get it on a super deluxe live one day. I really don't know. But for me, that's what I would tell someone who's on the fence about getting this or not. Like, that's going to be, that's what, when I get it, that's, that's the first disc I'm putting in my, in the tray. It's like I can't wait to hear that because the band, we we all know there's something different about hearing the band live and seeing the band live, and especially in the '70s. So for me, that 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 was the biggest selling point. Was that live disc? Boom, bingo, Lonnie. That's the real thing. Um, Ken, for you, what would be the one thing that you would uh, use as your sale point? <laughs> well, it's. It's a, a lot of things, but I'm going to say, I mean, disc two and disc three um, has a lot of, you know, uh, previously unreleased things. Um, you know, for instance, uh, what is it? Uh, the fire or what is it? Uh, I forget now what I'm saying here. It's the fire. Um, that, that one where we've heard, you know, very rough sounding uh uh, you know stuff on the on the you know YouTube or whatever, um, and I think and this is going to be crystal clear, uh, especially like ain't none of your business too. Also that one, I mean when I heard parts of that, I thought wow that sounds really good. You know, um, so I'm looking forward to these alternate versions of songs or early versions demos that haven't been released, all those those types of things. Um, that stuff interests me a lot and you know yeah the book i'm hoping the book is good of course um but yeah i have the bootleg of the you know the the show it's just for me it's gonna be a comparison but yeah i i think if i was gonna tell somebody well yeah there's a lot of some other songs here that have never been released or or they're they're you know uh you know early versions and, and things that they're cool to hear uh, from the, you know, as comparing him to the, the final version that ended up on the album. Yeah, um, I'm with you, Ken, because you talk about the quality of those demos and also the quality of that show. And like I said earlier, you know, paying Gene for stuff I've enjoyed for years. I am really excited about hearing uh, none of your business, you know, in perfect quality or nightfly they're, they're calling it night boy here for some reason um <laughs> whatever so uh and love is all right it, that's Bad a ball girl. song apparently well i don't care you know and it's the fire in pristine you know quality that is what it is about for me um mm. again mileage varies as you hear while we even go around our little circle here um but that would be the reason why i would say go out and buy it and i'm also very intrigued by this new acoustic mix of beth so mm -hmm. are they dialing that back to what dick wagner recorded on the acoustic doubling the piano in 1976 or is it the john trope guitar that was used for the acoustic version in the phantom of the park just mm offset because that was a, a more <laughs> honest guitar arrangement of Beth musically for that performance than doubling piano chords for mm. the uh, 76 studio recording. So I am intrigued by that as well. Um, as long as it does respect to Peter. 
and doesn't mm. fuck with the song again. It, um, mm. You know, taking out the orchestra, it's still going to be on the remaster version on the first disc. So uh, if it is abominable, well, you know what? That's fine. Mark, I almost feel like with you purchasing this, I should be buying you the double platinum destroyer award for the other wall. Um, I'm I'm really frustrated by the temptation I'm resisting currently in doing so, but you never know what might show up in your mail. What would be the sale point for you? Um, for Let's say there's a, a fan out there who's like you, who's not a big fan of what Bob Ezrin did to the band and how he changed the dynamic of what they were musically in 1975-76. What would be the thing that uh, you persuade them to buy it by saying? I'll, I'll tell you. If if I if I was to convince people that I know, for example, within my circle, and and I'll you know be honest, there's I have quite a few friends that are not the biggest Kiss fans, are casual, really? right? So, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but the funny thing is, a lot of them are big fans of music. A lot of them are big fans of high quality audio, Blu-ray audio. There are a lot of them like collecting Blu-ray stuff and Blu-ray mm -hmm. kind of mixes and Fi one for me. The the selling point for me is the Blu-ray because I have bought quite a few Blu-rays in my time. A lot of Stephen Wilson Blu-rays that he's done of his own albums. Uh, I've bought a lot of the Blu-rays of the Rush ones. There's a Blu-ray of Fly By Night and of Signals and of uh, Farewell to Kings you can get on Blu-ray. There's a lot of these kind of high audio versions you can get out there. And if you look in here, it says there's a Dolby Atmos 48K 24-bit. There's a Dolby True HD 5.1 96K 24-bit. There's a 5.1 Master Audio 96K 24-bit. And there's a stereo PCM 96K 24-bit version of the album. So I'm telling you, you may not think you'll notice a difference of it, but you will notice even in the stereo version at 96 24-bit, the reverbs are much more clearer and cleaner and crisper. Acoustic guitars will sound brighter and better in that in that sort of uh, fidelity. I think that if you're a person who really enjoys his music and likes and has a even a half decent system, even if you just have like an audio bar, you know, with the you know those ones that you can buy that you stick in front of your TV, those things mm -hmm. too will show the benefits of a 24-bit 96k stereo mix easily. Okay, so I think that if you're into that kind of stuff and you, you like that sort of 5.1 thing as well, if you have a like, even if you have a 5.1 system, which a lot of people own, there are two different versions of the 5.1 mix on here in Blu ray. So for me, the people that I know that are in that who are also like studio people as well, I think that they would love this version of it and might be the thing that would get them to buy it. I mean, I also know a lot of people who collect stuff. So of course the ephemera stuff would be a big lure as well for those things that, you know, you, can, you can't get online without paying, you know, a left nut and $2,000. So, you know, I, I, I think that that would be a big lure as well. You know, you, you can get this stuff and see what it's all about without having to go bankrupt. So I think those are the two things, but mainly the Blu-ray, I think is what I would give the big pitch to the people that I know. <clears throat> nice. It's, it's so refreshing to have a basically four thumbs up for this product. That is the big news. Um, let's quickly just touch on Ace's, um, you know, sets now that, you know, I did a show with Andy um, about the opening night of all that. Uh, opening for Alice Cooper obviously gives him limitations on how much time he has and the sort of material that he's able to present to an audience. But what are your, what are your impressions of the set? I will say that last night in Utica, New York, they did shift up the set list and they brought Rip It Out back in, oh, okay. which is one of the big complaints from, you know, quite a few people that I spoke to about the set that Ace Frehley not performing a song from his freaking solo album is just morally wrong, especially when opening for um, Alice. So, Lonnie, uh, let's start with you and uh, on your take on that. Yeah, I I understand that he's on time restraints, you know, being in the opening slot. But when that first set list came out, I was you know excited for it, and I read it, and I was like, just kind of shaking my head, like, why? Why are there no Nothing off the solo album, 78. No Freely's comment. No solo stuff, period. Except for the the covers, which... Did he do New York Group? <clears throat> yeah, I guess he did. New, did he do New York Group? Julian's exactly. Yes. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> but it's, it's still, it's just yeah. no, 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 no solo 80s <clears throat> stuff. No solo 2000 stuff. I mean, yeah, the covers, that's fine. And that, and I enjoyed the covers and his and his two albums were the covers. But when I go see a band, I'm not going to hear covers. I want to hear your stuff. I'm paying to see you. Yes, he did. New York Groove, not your covers. So to me, I'm like, I, I was disappointed. And it's cool that they're doing like again. It's cool they're doing Rip It Out finally. But and but at the same time, you have to think about well, he has to play to the audience that it's not necessarily a hard I mean, there's i'm sure there's hardcore kiss fans there and hardcore ace freely fans there but there's also alice cooper fans there too that he goes into some 80s stuff from Fraley's kind of looking at themselves like well i, I don't know this mm-hmm. so i at, at a certain point at, at one hand i get it at the other point other hand i'm kind of <clears> disappointed <throat> that there's not more more just ace Fraley solo material now, let me ask you something else completely off topic, Lonnie. Did you hear sure. the new Guns N' Roses track today? Hard I School. did. I listened to it at work today. It was fantastic. I'm excited about it. Yeah, it wasn't absurd. Oh, oh my Thank gosh. God. It's, like, it's night and day compared to absurd. I mean, it sounds like Guns N' Roses. Yeah. So I I'm, didn't hear you. I'm super excited. Um, Ch- check it out when you find the I'll, link. I'll, I'll, I'll be up watching football tonight, so I'm, I'm sure I'll be up when, when it drops. I'll, I'll be sure to download it when it drops. Nice. Ken, what, what's your take on the uh, Ace set? I think I, I yeah I glanced at it and I noticed uh, definitely like um, didn't he do Strutter? And, yep. Like, Originally, yeah. And he didn't, but he did not do he didn't do Rocket Ride, did he? Or did he do Rocket? He did. Yeah. It opens with it. Yeah. Oh, 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 he does. It's, 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 it's okay. a shocker right. opening right. with that. All right, uh, but still having Strutter, I would still rather him. It's not one of Kiss's biggest songs. Even the people that are going to see Alice Cooper don't know again. It, not going to know strutter or whatever so do one of your another song from your solo album 78 or do something from you know dynasty or or whatever i don't know do you do hard times <clears throat> um yeah see i i would have loved i would love if he did you know hard time do do a really those are some really well written good songs and just do those if you have a great song of your own that you did um, and you did with Kiss. You sang with Kiss. Why are you singing a Paul Stanley strutter when you can do, you know, Hard Times or or one of your other songs that you sang with Kiss? So yeah, I, I don't get it to a, to a degree. Um, hopefully, yeah, they're they're figuring it out and will you know get the set list to a, you know a good final one um, <clears throat> as they go along here as they get feedback from, from people like us. Yeah, I think it's to give Ace a break from singing, you know, and it's stuff that the other guys in the band can, you know, take the load so he can have a breather. Yeah. You know, they've done Love Gun. They flipped out Detroit Rock City and Boston for Love Gun. Uh, last night they flipped out Manic Depression for Rip It Out. So, you know, I'm sure they've they've got a, a decent amount of stuff, you know, rehearsed. Uh, it's hopefully. a Zeppelin, right? So. Yeah, they're still doing uh, Good Times, Bad good times, times as bad part times. of the medley, along with Never in My Life as the cover. So, you know, I, I think the set's fluid. At least it's not the same every show. And uh, again, Ace needs a breather. I will say that, you know, from the video I've now seen of him, I hadn't seen a thing when I did that uh, mm-hmm. show with Andy. Um, so the uh, 2001 Space Odyssey title, I didn't know that was the title of that piece oh, yeah, of music. Yeah. So yeah, I, the, learned, I learned something new this week. It's an old um, song, but it's yeah, it was a theme song. Yeah, I, I had no clue whatsoever. That, the movie that, and for that Elvis. Was, yeah, that, yeah, that was his name. And I watched Aloha in Hawaii, and I heard that. I was like, oh, shit, of course, duh. Yeah, you yeah, know. exactly. Now, now I know that it has that name, which I'll never remember. So, yeah. you know, the set is good ace is looking great the band is tight they got night bob behind the soundboard so uh the very best sound mixer in the industry working th- that tour is very cool mark your take on the set list um you know i probably wasn't as critical about it i mean y- you know i kind of come to expect that ace is going to do some of these kiss songs that most people scratch their head, like saying, why is he playing Love Gun? That's a Paul Stanley kind of song. It's not really known as an ace song. 
Right, but I mean, when you look at the set list, he did Rocket Ride, Parasite, Strutter, She, Rip It Out, Never in My Life, Good Times, Bad Times, Detroit Rock City, New York Groove, Shock Me, Ace Freely Guitar Solo, Cold Gin slash Black Diamond, and Deuce. Now, the thing that kind of bug, bugs me if I'm an Ace Freely fan, because look, let's face it, yeah, Kiss fans are going to go and probably go see Ace, but most people I would imagine are people who are fans of Ace Freely's music. Right, his albums. So where's the Rock Soldiers? You know, where's the stuff from the, those albums? Or like he he hasn't played anything off of Anomaly for who knows how long, or you know Space Invader. I mean, why doesn't he play the songs off of that stuff? I mean, Ken made a good point. How many people are gonna really know, you know, Strutter and an Alice Cooper crowd? Or how many people are gonna know Rocket Ride? I mean, you know, like play some of your own stuff. You know, maybe if you play something from those records, somebody in the audience who's an Alice Cooper fan might say, yeah, I really like that Rock Soldier song. I'm going to go grab that album and buy it. You know, and now you're benefiting yourself, not Kiss. You know, they'll <laughs> buy a, an Ace album. You know, it, I, I just kind of look at it that way. He's, he's out there supporting his records. You know, he's, he's playing two covers. I mean, because he's obviously trying to support Origins 2 as well while he's at it, right? Yeah, and he, and he is promoting, he at least he's mentioning it. I think with Alice Cooper, he should be doing Dolls. Yeah, yeah, so, well, there you go. So so there you go. I mean, I, I just, you know, it doesn't bug me as much. I mean, if I went and saw Ace, I think I would be satisfied with this because these are all songs that I know and I'm, you know, just like you guys, I'm well-versed with all these songs. I know their, their history and stuff like that. So I would have a, I would be entertained, but I would think of it from a artistic point of view. If I'm touring with Alice Cooper, let's face it, most people are going to be there for Alice Cooper. And the people that are there for Ace, I'd like to think are there because they're Kiss fans, but they're also Ace Freely fans. So play more of your stuff. This is your chance to play something off of Anomaly. This is your chance to play something off of Space Invader. You know, this is your chance to play something off of Spaceman. You know, he doesn't play anything off of that, you know? I think that was one of his best records he did, the last one, you know? So why not play those songs? Fair enough. All right, before we leave, Ken, have you had a response to your email about the freaking... <laughs> Dubai debacle DVD. Two thousand Dubai. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. Uh, I was looking at uh, my emails and Jan this is what happened. January sixth. This is after the uh, you know they had the Dubai concert and all that, and people bought the you know the gold and VIP one and the platinum VIP, and it were yeah. I think you got the platinum one, Julian, which had. The, a I'm little extra idiot. stuff, some signed I want, stuff, I wanted the vinyl, the vinyl um, um, both both packages. So have stuff like you know the T-shirt and and DVD, Blu-ray kind of thing, and all that stuff, and posters and guitar picks and drumsticks, whatever. Um, so that was a selling point, you know. That's why Julian <laughs> purchased and I purchased my my package. Uh, and so January 6th, they they sent out an email. This is that Kiss Goodbye 2020 group um, said that it was going to be, uh, this product would be shipped in late April, early May. So then April 19th comes around and it says, uh, they say, it's an email, they're, they're working on a release date for it. Okay. All right. Well, it's obviously going to be a little late. So then June June 29th, I sent them around that time. I sent them an email. They responded to my email then. They said they were working with the band to finalize edits, right? Uh, on the I guess the Blu-ray, and they hope to have a release date in the next couple of weeks. So June 7th or July 7th. They, they sent an email with some pictures of some of the merch, like a, a hat that said Goodbye 2020, I think <laughs> on a laminate, maybe, oh, wow, something, maybe something else. Like, yeah, they put down there. It's like, oh, okay, like they have something, like they received some stuff. And they say, they said at that time that they're going to shipping out early August. And then they'll also include some extra goodies for the you know the weight because of the weight we've you know had uh, being late so they're gonna send extra goodies well we deserve it well after that <laughs> august 13th comes right i'm all about the mid-august almost and they said early august right um so i said i emailed no response all right so comes 
I didn't do anything. I just waited. And then September 20th, just beginning of this week, I emailed them again. No response. Uh, Time to so, tell the dog. Are you seeing any of these emails? I, are you calling people out, putting your finger in people's chests? You know, I, what bothers me is like, <laughs> Be more forthright, in, in, you know, upfront about what it is. If you're not going to have the product, or you can't, or you can't manufacture the stuff, at least either refund the stuff, be honest and refund it, or, or I'll never do that. Put That's something funny. in its place. Get stuff from the Kiss online shop that's the equivalent of the stuffing, and, and give us that. I don't know. Give us something. Um, it's it's just a real real mess Clusterfuck. and the other thing it has well yeah and it has kiss's name kiss's name is is tied to it this yeah stuff. but K- kiss's check didn't bounce so they they're out you know they probably <clears> had, they out, probably had approvals it it's a third party nothing to do with gene and paul now or the or the business but it makes them look really bad you know what we were exactly. sold in those packages that up. we were going to have a behind the scenes look at the whole process and there was fuck all there was nothing, and that's what that's what made me drop all support for Ross. It's not the vision of the project. I still love that. I would still think it would be fantastic to see. It's his communication and vagueness that just became intolerable. And Landmark's done the exact same thing because you know what? I haven't had any of these emails. You know, you only get a response to the one per, to the Sometimes. person who's complaining. They don't send it out to everyone. You know, and mm-hmm. they haven't met any of their goals. They haven't continued to, you know, keep us informed. If they were honest and say, "Hey, this Something. is the road, ma- this is the bump. We're not as important as Restful Records, so we can't get our vinyl pressed." You know, we're <laughs> our pressing's even smaller than that. You know, so <laughs> if, if they were transparent and honest, even to the point of saying, "Well, we're no longer able to fulfill this aspect of it because you know, I don't want them to use COVID as an excuse because that's being so fucking overbaked." <laughs> they've done um, in their emails too yeah but band approvals for the video you're actually blaming the band and that's really oh, bad yeah, optics yeah. you're passing the buck yeah mm-hmm. yeah they, this the, the, this vip uh, packages that those were a selling point of getting people to you know purchase you know spend a little extra money you know i, I did about 250 and I'm not going to say what Julian should be on the, you know, the... Well, the everyone platform. knows it was, it was a thousand bucks for the... It was, it was nine ninety nine ninety nine oh, or whatever, whatever. Yeah. I mean... And it makes low, the band look good. bad. That's the part that bothers me the most. It makes it, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and Gene and all those guys, everyone always blames Gene, you know, or Paul, or the band members individually. And it's not their fault, it's another a third party it's business the third party that they that. signed a contract right. with and if they signed a contract that said that they have the rights of approvals for the video and something was delivered that was unacceptable to them that's in the contract that's perfectly fine it then falls on the business to come back to the purchasers and say i'm sorry the band has not approved of this for whatever reason you don't make the band look bad that's very bad business mm-hmm. you don't blame the bad look yeah, you do not what? blame them for your own failures of bringing that Guinness douchebag up on stage <laughs> and making him uneditable well, out of the video. One other point, uh, Andrew on the board, because there was a thread of this, of course, about this. But a threat or a thread? A thread. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it was both in the same. Um, there's a thread that uh, about this, and he uh, Andrew posted something of a chat, and some guy saying that. So basically that you know it's it's been canceled or or something and they're gonna refund everybody and i and, and andrew says is this true you know who is asking that guy? and i said hey some guy named john j-o-n and uh That's and like Bob. uh Bob yeah Smith. and i said i said i said <laughs> andrew i said you need to go back to john and ask him for some proof if that's true or not you know, you know the, the, we can find out if you know if they're gonna do that but that's the thing. I mean, Julia makes a good point. I mean, look, at I like I said, I'm I'm a I'm a little rinky ding label, but even me, and I'm sure Julian and Ken can agree attest to this. If I have some kind of delay, I always post something or I always make a video. Or I, yeah. I, to me, I think the most important thing is keeping in contact with your supporters. If you don't do that, they'll never have trust in you again. And if you hope to have any return business, you better make sure you're on them saying, listen, I have this issue. It's better. Uh, I've 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 seen this firsthand with my stuff. Everybody that I deal with says that they'd rather hear from me saying, 
sorry guys, it's going to be another six weeks, there's a delay, than for me not contacting them at all and letting people hang. You know That's what I mean? insufferable, rather, or being, or being yeah. vague in doing so, which is the point with Ross that bugs me. You know, even to something that I haven't taken money on, you know, I've still put out updates about this and why it's delayed past its July the 28th, you know, original intended publication date, just to keep people who are interested in it informed. And because I consider them my partners in this trip, you know, that I want them to feel respected so that when I am able to finally say I've, you know, dotted all those I's and crossed all the T's mm -hmm. and done everything I can to make that the very best bit of product, I'm ready to release it, that they don't say, well, fuck you, you haven't talked to me, you know, you haven't treated me with respect. Respect is mm -hmm. key in life. Yes. Sorry, that was a hot take from multiple members of the Kiss FAQ. Yeah, so don't, so don't. So kiss online, or it was shut, you know, don't screw up. Destroy don't shout us. at Keith. Don't shout at Doc. I mean, <laughs> um, if Doc does happen to hear of this, um, you know, he's the manager. This does fall under his ballpark, you know, to have a quiet word with Landmark or whomever is the backing on that. And you know what? Um, I'm sure if everything's in compliance with Kiss's side of the contract, there's not much that he can do. But he could also say, you are making Kiss look bad. That is not good for you. Mm -hmm. um, and and that's, that's all I would hope for. You know, quiet words, done properly. We don't need the details. I don't care about the details. You know, if it is dead in the water, and that would be perfectly fine. If they do need mm -hmm. to change the terms, communicate it. But keep the band's name clean in anything yeah. you do that is official especially you know because this is all officially sanctioned and uh you know it's not like some freaking fan project and that's fictitious so there um, we are what, one last thing on that uh this is going back to this but destroyer um there is some thing going around where there's going to be the international release mm -hmm. uh, German, or a different yeah. version of vinyl or something and it's going to have like i think it's going to be like you know, like that logo? Yeah, that's, logo. A, that's a play on the Electrola uh, original release in 76. Yeah, when this it came is original, on, yeah. yeah, when so, it came out on EMI, it had that, go well, first they had Gothic logos, Germany. then they had that. This one's made in Germany. Um, yeah. But yeah, Gemma. So so anyway, um, yeah, that's, I'm hearing August, or October, October 1st. 1st. Yeah. As a, so keep your eye out for, for that, people who want, you know, like to get the different... Uh, Kind of stuff. Yeah, they'll, 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 they'll need the international yeah. options so that they, you know, international customers aren't, uh, you know, punished by the USPS. Which, by the yeah. way, the USPS, <clears throat> I sent a postcard to my father in, in uh, England from Hawaii and I Did put it, it. No, it came here. Put the LA first. No, it came here. It was delivered to <laughs> me, the return address. And then oh put it back God. in the post box, and two days later it came back to me again. So it was oh in the post God. box for the third time. So don't do, don't make anyone now suffer. Albert. No, now it's in Los Angeles. <laughs> 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 it's gonna go to Ken next, and you know probably, where he yeah. is. Uh, uh, well, there we are. That, that's a bunch of uh, current stuff. Uh, good to be back and do the show today. Obviously, as, as you can tell, I've had a couple of beers, so I'm nice and relaxed and in the mood um, while I suffocate in poisonous air. But Destroyer 45, get it. You know, it's what we've been waiting for. And if you're you're not going to get it, well, fine. Uh, don't complain. I even say get it. Yeah, even even get Mark it. approves. Even, even hater more to come. Yeah, right? you know, <laughs> I'm sure Bob Ezrin's going to show up at your door and knock. Can I sign that for you, Mark? I, I hear you finally bought Destroyer, <laughs> and you're happy about it. No. All right, there we are. From Lonnie, from Ken, Mark, and myself. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for spending time listening to the Kiss FAQ podcast today. All sales are final. There are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.